G'day and welcome to another episode of Tech Edit Crafts. We are in the middle of the airship Kickstarter right now. So here is a painting tutorial for this amazing model. The model is designed by Ian Lovecraft. As always, superlative designs and this has been a pure joy to paint. The, the sheer scope of details in this thing. Every time you turn it, you're gonna find something new to paint. It's a wonderful, wonderful piece. Click on the link in the description for the Kickstarter if you would like to go back this to get the STL for the toss a coin to the bud level. You've got the meteorological tower, this one, or you get at the full level, you get the airship and all the buildings, and it is an amazing set. The buildings are just, ah, so much character, they scream D&D campaign, and I really cannot wait to start incorporating these into my games. So sit back, relax, watch the tutorial. Don't forget to click like, click subscribe, and click that notification button on so that you never miss an episode of Tech Edit Crafts. Cheers, guys. Let's grab some of this Tormund's wall paint. This is seasoned acorn, and I use this for the majority of all the wood components of the model. Interior wall paint might seem like an odd choice to paint terrain. However, going over the 3D prints, this actually has enough consistency to it to really hide a lot of those layer lines. The first color that I used for the propellers, kept changing it, so this is move on. My favorite two colors at the moment, Hooker's Green and Deep Violet, both from Liquitex Basics. These vibrant colors form the mainstay of the balloon. I blend them up with a bit of white later and dry brush over them twice. Once with like a one-to-one -one mix of white and that color and as a fairly heavy dry brush. The next is with probably more of a two-to-one or three-to-one white to color and a very light dry brush just to pick out all of the details of that canvas. You can use any white craft paint. I'm using this Chromosil medium bodied students acrylic white. The second of the major wood colors from the Tormans range is this timber beam. And I use this as a dry brush uh, on the timber at various times, but it's also a fantastic base for the rope. A good silver color is really hard to find. And unfortunately this Chromosil silver is not it. Since filming this, I have found the Liquitex Professional heavy bodied acrylic which is an iridescent rich silver. It is a beautiful paint to work with, but unfortunately I'm using the Chromosil. After it's gone over all of the iron work, I do a black wash. This helps to bring out all of the rivets and lines in between the armor platings. It's a, a really simple way to just bring out all of that detail. However, I've found to do gold, it's a little harder. So I start with that seasoned acorn, the nice brown color I used on the timber. That forms a base for anything that I'm going to do gold. I'm then going over it with a base metal color of copper and then dry brush later with gold. This is also after a brown wash. You'll see a lot of alternate bits and pieces in this video, which are part of the stretch goals of the campaign. So if you'd like to see those get added to the campaign, make sure you jump over and back the project. Here we have Prussian blue hue. I'm using this one with gray as a stone base for the battering ram. I'm returning to timber beam to paint the flight stand. 
The flight stand really does sort of break that fourth wall a little bit between miniature and setting. So I'm not hiding from that. This stand is necessary for the airship to stand upright on the table. So let's not hide from it. You've got to use it. It makes sense just to make it look as good as you can. So this really does look like cut timber once you've painted that up. I'm using gray for the, all of the pipes on the airship, then mixing in some blue with that gray and really watering it down as a wash to go over the gray. Dry brush time for the battering ram. This is a medium gray all over dry brush with then a light gray, very fine dry brush on the edges to bring out all of those little details. By the end of the project, I'd actually settled on timber beam for the propellers and painting it up exactly the same as I did for the flight stand. But here is my second attempt at the propellers using a light gray, then a white dry brush. And it, it really just ended up looking dirty. All of the other components I did keep. So using the unbleached titanium for the belt work on the propellers, that stayed with a brown wash later. And I did do a little trim of purple and green on the edge of the propellers. You'll often see like World War II planes or World War I planes even, that uh, they had these little, you know, flourish lines on the propellers. When the propeller was turning, it created like a circle pattern. I thought that sounded cool, I'll do that. Next, we have the all over brown wash on the majority of the model. So it works well on all of the timber. It'll go over a lot of the dirtier iron work and it'll go on the belts, it'll go on the ropes, all over. To paint the furnace, I'm doing exactly the same technique as what I did for the Dwarven Keg Dice Roller. So I'm using terracotta for the kiln part and a range of metallics and what have you for the rest of it. You can check out that Dwarven Dice Tower in the link above. And then a lot of these elements have gotten a brown wash over the top of that. That helps to darken them up and give them a bit more depth. Don't forget to click that like and the subscribe button. But if you'd really like to support the channel, head on over to Patreon at patreon.com slash techadaptcrafts and become one of the latest patrons. We have a monthly live stream and a thriving Discord chat, which is a place where we can actually come together and paint together, share photos and share stories of how we're actually hobbying. The support I get from these people is really, really touching and I, I really couldn't do it without them. Thank you very much, guys. You mean the world to me. We're on the homeward stretch now. So we're on the rope and dry brushing that unbleached titanium to bring out all of the detail of those amazing ropes holding the hot air balloon together. We have all of the little details. So using this primary yellow, I'm going over the moon iconography and the stars that are on the side of the ship's cabin. This is the first layer and I do highlight it up with successively lighter layers of yellow which is just adding more white. all of the windows in the doors, all of those little portals, I'm using this Prussian blue hue and then working that up with lighter shades of blue, such as the cobalt blue and then a blue mist. the blue wash over those pipes, not to make them really stand out, but just to give them a little bit of variety. Then we're going to darken up some of the timber. The balustrade parts of all of those railings, I'm going to paint with this star anise, which is essentially a burnt umber. After that, it's a dry brush over the top with just a lightened version of that brown, and we are done. 
So there we have the tutorial for the airship. Hope that you enjoyed that and might look at uh, getting your own copy of the airship. And I'd love to see the, the colors that you paint for the balloon or for the, for the various buildings that are in this pack. If you do, make sure you tag me on Instagram and share those photos. But until next time, keep hobbying.